What up, dude bros? I'm Frank. I said I wouldn't do it, but I did. I bought the Nerf Battle Racer for a review. <laughs> now you can go vroom vroom and pew pew at the same time. A huge shout out to this video sponsor, War Robots. In War Robots, you engage in tactical 6v6 multiplayer combat. You get to choose your own robot and customize that robot to define your own gameplay. So it's not all button mashing, it's all about that strategery, picking the right gear and so on. And the game features rich 3D graphics from a mobile device. And over 70 million players have already installed the game, so finding a match should be pretty easy. No wonder there are so many downloads, there are constant content updates with new robots, maps, and game mods. You can install War Robots right now with the link in the description box below. Download War Robots with that link and you get a huge starter pack, including Leo Robot, one cane weapon, three mallet weapons, 100 gold and 400,000 silver. All that GP, brah. Then you can get to customizing right when you download. Thanks again to War Robots for sponsoring this video. If you guys would like to download that mobile game, link in the description box below. Now onto the review of this war robot. <laughs> the Nerf Battle Racer is not new by any means. I'm very late on this review. And when it launched, I actually initially said I would not buy this product because I think it's just ridiculous. And I still do think it's ridiculous, but I have a cool mod, like a Nerf tank kind of idea that I'm gonna use this as the platform to build on top of. So I'm gonna review it anyways in case anybody was curious about this product. So the Nerf Battle Racer retails for about 200 US dollars, which is super expensive for like a Nerf Blaster product, but it's sort of in line with other pedal carts of a similar form factor. While it's ballpark close, there is a distinct mark up from this product compared to other ones of equal quality. So you're paying a little extra for the Nerf logos and the little Nerf features. If you're just after a pedal cart like this and you don't care about Nerf or Nerf blasters, you can save a little bit of money by buying a cheaper one that's not branded with Nerf. Also worth pointing out, there's an advertised age range of four to 10 years of age. I typically complain when a blaster grip is too small and I say these aren't just for kids, adults use them. This openly says four to 10 years old. So I can't really complain that it's a smaller product. Something that is suitable for me, I'm an adult, I'm over over 6'3 in height would not be suitable for a five-year-old. It would just be way too big, perhaps too heavy for their little legs to propel. So I totally understand why it's this size, so I don't wanna harp on the size too much. Although I understand it's quite comical to see somebody of my size driving this little thing around. <laughs> Need to make that note clear because this review is guided towards the smaller, younger uh, nerfers. Okay, so the overview of this product. It's a pedal cart, so you can pedal it and it's a cart. Hence, pedal cart. It's not a motorcycle. It has four wheels, so it's way more stable. A bike or a scooter would be pretty cool, but if you just wanted to kind of park or if you wanted to focus more on on shooting as you're traveling this I mean it's much harder to fall off or crash with this you can still totally crash it and I've crashed it um, but I would be crashing a lot more in like a bicycle or a two-wheel configuration. So the tires are large in diameter compared to other pedal carts of a similar like form factor, which allows you to go like, quote, off-roading a little bit easier. And the tire material itself is a rubber, so you can get some traction compared to like one of those plastic tires on a lot of these pedal carts. However, off-roading isn't really a realistic expectation with this product. First, the gears can't be changed. It's just a direct drive system. You don't have hand gears like on a mountain bike to give you a mechanical advantage if you're going up a hill. You know, you drop down gear so you, it's easier to pedal as you're traveling up the hill. So off-roading in thick weeds or whatever might be really tough. Plus the seating position really isn't optimal to apply force properly to these pedals. You're sitting back with your legs out kind of lounging compared to on a bicycle where you're sitting over top of the pedals, pushing down with your legs, kind of like you're stepping. And that bicycle configuration is of course a more efficient use of the, the human legs. So in my opinion, this is best suited for flat terrain, preferably roads. Like if you have a large driveway, this would be great. Grass, any inclines will be really tricky. Getting to the propulsion mech, or the drivetrain. I'm in blaster review mode. Like I mentioned, there's a direct drive system, so you can't change gears or anything. That's just forward and backward. And perhaps you've heard of rear wheel drive or front wheel drive, or if you're a Subi fan, all wheel drive. This isn't even two wheel drive, it's one wheel drive. Only the back right wheel actually turns when you're pushing on the pedals. The rest just help you roll. 
see that that wheel isn't even moving, and this one is. This is worth noting, but it's really not a big deal unless you have incredibly powerful legs or you're on a really slick material. Being powered by only one wheel is not going to make you lose traction or not be able to, you know, drive more performance oriented or anything. You're pretty limited in the power you can apply to the device, so being one wheel drive isn't a big disadvantage, but it's worth noting. The pedal system does not have that ratcheting effect that you would find on many mountain bikes. Like I mentioned, it's a direct drive system, so if you're rolling down a hill and your wheel is spinning, your pedals are also going to be moving. And if you're rolling down a hill, that can get uncomfortable because your legs are going to have to fit with the pedals or you lift your legs up and that's just weird. Compared to on a mountain bike, if you're riding down a hill, your feet can be on the pedals and you hear that ratcheting sound. So the wheel's spinning, but your pedals don't have to move, which is why they have this fun little knob right here. This is kind of like a, a clutch to disengage the drivetrain from your pedals. So if your wheel is spinning, you can hit disengage and then your pedals can stop or they can move freely without applying force to the wheel. All of the analogies I have in my head to describe what's going on here are for cars. And if you're in that four to 10 year old age range, you probably don't know how to drive. But in case you do know how cars work, this is like pushing in the clutch pedal or going into the neutral gear on an automatic transmission that disconnects your powertrain so you could be slamming on the gas in a car and it's not making you go. And after you re-engage that, it takes a little half click or whatever to reactivate the gears and then you're ready to propel yourself again. That's what this little knob right here does. <laughs> This one is the handbrake, or the only brake in this vehicle. It doesn't have any brakes down by the feet here. It doesn't have the hand brakes like on a bicycle. This is how you stop. So to stop, you pull up on this handle. They don't hide anything, so it's really easy to see what's going on here. When you pull up on this knob, it pushes this little brake pad into the wheel, which slows or stops the wheel depending on how hard you pull on it. This handbrake will work whether or not your clutch is engaged because it's directly impacting your tire. So that's enough on the drivetrain. Probably got a little too detailed on that. Up top, we have the steering wheel. This works how most steering wheels work. The turning radius is not as good as I was hoping for. If you're using it in its intended habitat of outside, like on your driveway or on a, a closed street, in that application, the turning radius is probably fine. When I'm driving around my living room, I would like a little bit more maneuverability. But if you're in that intended age range of four to 10, you probably don't own your living room. You're probably living with your parents and they probably don't want you driving this thing in there anyways. But I don't wanna get my wheels all dirty. So my testing outside was fairly limited after I swept and I used my leaf blower to clear off all the dust. So that is that. Now to the seat. Now the chair is completely plastic, which which makes it a little uncomfortable, but uh, more weatherproof. This is totally an outdoor toy. So if they had a cushion or something and it was raining or you know you sprayed it with a hose or something, that'd be annoying. So plastic, I totally get it, but it's not the most comfortable choice. But let's get real. You're buying this because you wanna go vroom vroom and pew pew at the same time. So the comfort of your butt probably isn't a priority. It's all about killing those zambies with your Nerf blasters, bros. And the seat is adjustable. It has three positions. Um, it's not quite as adjustable as the box makes it seem. And being a pedal cart, the distance between your butt and the pedals is pretty important. So you want to be able to scoot the chair up a little bit if you're shorter and you need that advantage to um, you know actually reach the pedals. Built into the chair we have two cup holders or little cubby areas. They aren't deep enough or even circular so cup holder is probably the wrong word. If you have a thinner can like a Red Bull that will fit otherwise you can leave darts in there but it is a pretty shallow little cubby so you might lose those darts if you're driving or at least if you're driving like I drive like hardcore parkour style crashing into stuff and trying to do e-brake turns bro like drifting style. That's a solid segue to what makes this a nerfy cart. So that's the first actual actual Nerf feature that I've mentioned, like being helpful in a Nerf battle. Other than the Nerf logos all over the place, what else makes it Nerfy? So first you have the little cup holder or dart holder. On the back of the seat, you have these two little rings that you can fit barrels through to hold two blasters in the back here. More Nerfy features up in the front hood here, you have some dart storage. Realistically speaking, it's not the most practical, but I think it looks cool and you know, tactical. Not practical, but tactical. As a magazine user, when I see these little dart rings, I le like to put darts in them just for cosmetic reasons. It looks cool. Then also up on the hood here, you have two little blaster cubbies. It's not just a shelf. It is more specifically designed for a Nerf blaster than a simple shelf. So it does feel more nerfy than a normal pedal cart. And it's great to put the handle in the rear hole and then the magazine in the front hole like this. Two issues I encountered, blasters like the Rapid Strike with the magazine release right here, the magazine release will rest on the plastic, which, you know, activates that so your magazine will drop out on accident. Also, I have the 18 round stick mag in there right now, and as you're pedaling, you can bang into the magazine, which is annoying, it'll slow you down, and it's just obnoxious. And if you bump the magazine release, impacting the mag, it's guaranteed to drop out. <laughs> but it works just fine with 12 round mags. The 18 round stick mag is pretty long. And if the blaster you wanna store up here isn't like a, a handle magazine, just like that to fit into the holes, these little slots are kind of diverse enough to fit different types of blasters just by adding friction and kind of catch points on the blasters. I tried with a wide range of my Nerf blasters and I could fit all sorts of blasters up here. And as long as they're thin enough to fit into the hole, you could fit quite a few back here as well. But I had a few that were too thin that wouldn't catch on the handle so they would just like drop through. But I was able to configure most of my 
blasters to one of these two storage areas. And that's really it for the nerfy features. Two blasters back here, two blaster mounts up here, some dart storage and some dart holders, cup holders. Those are the practical usable features other than of course the Nerf logos, which are all over the place. I believe this is one of those licensed products that somebody said, hey, I can build this awesome cart. Let's get Nerf to sign on so we can put the Nerf logo all over the place because uh, Nerf is all over the place. I applied the decals where it was recommended by the little decal like list, but you have it burned into the chair. You have it multiple times on the like main drivetrain, on the steering wheel, the stickers all over. Uh, there's Nerf everywhere. And the colors are pretty nerfy with the, the nice use of orange. Getting every little ounce of that licensing right, right out of that contract. <laughs> so let's see this blaster out on the firing range in the chronograph. I'm on autopilot, man. Review mode. Review mode is one of the settings in my firmware. Driving demo, activate. Let's go. box doesn't have a helmet on. I suggest if you're gonna do some parkour like that, wear a helmet. Okay, zero to 60 test. I'm just gonna try to get to the wall as quickly as I can. Okay. Ah. If I continue trying to do stupid stuff for video, I'll hurt myself, the car, or my house. So, demo completed. I don't really have anything to compare this product to. I've ridden plenty of bicycles in my day, but this configuration is fairly new to me, so I can't really place a, a firm opinion on the quality or the, the drivability of this product. But I looked around at other pedal carts and the features seem similar. The build quality is better than I was expecting for sure. It has a nice metal frame and I crashed this thing quite a few times. And it's not like it's gonna bend or anything. With that Nerf brand logo, you kind of expect foam, maybe plastic, but metal. But like a reinforced strong product isn't something I immediately jump to when I see that Nerf logo. So pleasantly surprised. In the the choice of materials is also pretty solid for longevity. You can like spray it down with a hose if you're outside. You don't have to worry about it getting messy because you can just hose it off. It doesn't have any soft touch materials or anything like that. But as little as I know about these pedal carts, I can say you, you're losing a huge mechanical advantage over a bicycle or anything where the, the rider is up over the pedals. Because you're sitting back in that lounged, relaxed position, you're not most efficiently pushing on those pedals. So if you're gonna buy this as like a commuter vehicle, if that's even a thing for four to 10 year olds, if you wanted to drive this to your friend's house, it'll be really difficult to drive this for a long distance. First, it's, it's not terribly comfortable with a plastic chair, but it only has one gear. And if you're on flat terrain, just goofing around, not trying to go fast like uh, commuting, that's probably not an issue. But if you have a hill and you're trying to go up a hill, you're gonna have a bad time, bro. Or you're gonna have a you know a good exercise day. And that, that's if you're buying it as an exercise device, it might be effective for that. But there are pedal carts just like this with a simple drive system without this clutch uh, release. And that would be seriously annoying. So I do really like that they included that clutch. So if you are riding down a hill, y your feet don't like completely get all screwed up. A few minor gripes. The plastic chair is pretty uncomfortable. Bicycles have soft foam seats that have like a waterproof cover. They could probably have done one of those, but they didn't. So it's plastic and it, you know, it's not, terribly comfortable. And there is no active suspension in this, so if you run over like a rock or a bump, there's nothing to absorb that shock other than your bootay on plastic, which is not comfortable. And regarding the seat, the seat is technically adjustable because you can take out these bolts and then move it, but 
it's not quite as like easily adjustable as I was expecting out of a kid's toy. Instead of two siblings sharing this, one happens to be taller than the other, quickly shifting the chair back and forth. This seems more designed to fit one person. After they buy it, they set it to their own distance and then they just leave it there. It's not really as quick as I was expecting. And back when I was between four and 10 years old, I totally would have lost one of those nuts and then you can't keep the chair on the thing and then you can't sit on it and you can't drive it and you ruin it. And uh, that's, that's a bad time. So that's my opinion on the product as a pedal cart itself. Now as a nerfing pedal cart, it does pretty much what I was expecting. I mean, it's kind of gimmicky. It's not really optimized for a nerf battle. With the drive system and the suboptimal seating position, as I mentioned, it's hard to get this up to speed quickly. So if somebody's on foot running, they can probably run faster than you can drive this thing. So if you're considering this to, to get a tactical advantage over your opponents, it's really not optimized for that. You'd be much better off using a bicycle that you might already own and just buying a holster for your pistol so you can keep one hand on the handlebars and shoot. But as I mentioned, with that two wheel stability, if I tried that, I would fall off my bicycle. Being on four wheels is a lot more stable, but to expect Nerf to, to launch something with like a remote sentry, like a turret up here or something, to make it a true Nerf vehicle would just be like kind of unrealistic. That would make it terribly, terribly expensive. So pretty gimmicky. My overall opinion and sort of the purchase recommendation, if you're looking for a pedal cart like this, this similar form factor, and you happen to be a fan of Nerf, definitely check it out. If you're a nerfer looking for an accessory to your nerf battles, I would definitely avoid this one. It seems pretty clear they took an existing pedal cart design and they just slapped nerf logos all over it and they said, hey, we can make it hold blasters without going too far out of our way, let's do it for anybody who wants a pedal cart, but also really likes the nerf logo, which is the idea behind a lot of these licensed products like the, the clinch sack and some of the clothing and they have lunch boxes and backpacks and other things featuring the nerf logo for people who wanted a backpack that likes nerf rather than for somebody who's in a nerf war thinking I wanna carry more stuff. This is a backpack designed for nerf nerf battles. It's not like that at all. This really isn't as optimized for a nerf battle as you might expect. So you're paying a little bit more than other pedal carts without the nerf logo for this product with similar performance as those products with the nerf logo. If you don't care at all about nerf, this doesn't offer any features that other pedal carts don't on the market at a lower price point. So check those ones out instead. But this is not a pedal cart channel, so I'm not gonna review any of those. Hopefully my usage and demo video kind of covers what you wanted to see. My opinion on this type of product isn't terribly helpful. And just to remind any of my regular viewers, this review is guided towards the intended market of this product, four to 10, or realistically four to 15 years old. You can get a, a bigger body than a 10 year old in here. I'm about six, four and I fit technically, not really comfortably, but I fit and I could do it. So anybody under like five, eight would be not comfortable, that's a strong word for it, but they would fit reasonably well. But I'm starting to repeat myself, but I'm starting to repeat myself all over the place. So that concludes this video review. If you're interested in purchasing the Nerf Battle Racer, I'll leave a purchase link in the description box below. That concludes this review. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, bros, stay tactical. cool.